Welcome to the 26th section of the course of Asper System with C++ and Qt. My name is Carlos and now we're going to start with the inference kernel implementation. And this is the most important and most difficult part of the project. So let's start it right now. Okay, I would like to discuss the inference kernel, but I would like to say to you that we're going to change some stuff from the workspace but we're going to discuss that in the during the video just to inform you okay the inference kernel process the concept is that is the principal part of the inference engine and is the element with the rest that is responsible to convert the symptoms of any kind of endeavor or process or environment to conclusions. So to put that example, maybe we can discuss again about the cars, uh, automobiles, and the symptoms might be that you are having problems with the battery, that the turn, that the lights of the the headlights is not there that or maybe another example could be that the car is not is not starting or that you have a red light with the with the image of the engine in red and maybe th those can be the symptoms or maybe it can be something more technical maybe um the the car is is failing, is turning off when it's dying, is stopping when it's in high revolution. It, there is black smoke, a lot of black smoke. You can think about a lot of symptoms, but the inference scanner will convert those symptoms to conclusions and say, "Well, you're having black smoke. You're having a." Uh, problems in high revolution so this is the problem okay the, the inference kernel is the principal responsible of doing that that's the reason it's inferring okay so and uh, you might notice that the inference kernel has a strong dependency or maybe uh, I can say it in another way that the worst space is is composed the no, sorry. The inference kernel is composed deeply, strongly with the word space. There's, there could not be a word space without an inference engine. And the inference engine is the only entity that can have uh, um, access to the workspace. So we're going to discuss that later, but it's worth to notice. And something to teach you is that I'm not going to implement the algorithms of forward chaining and backward chaining, just to teach you. Uh, I don't want to put you every chain easy. easy. Uh, I think that you might need to develop that a little bit and work in, in those algorithms that are very interesting. So I think that is uh, beneficial for you, and uh, for me actually, because <laughs> very difficult to explain though those algorithms so okay um, let's start the implementation so the inference kernel is derived by the Q object why is that well let me just add the mm, Q object header um put a special macro inside the class okay this macro is mandatory to insert in every class that is is uh derived by q object if you put this inheritance without the macro is not going to work i think that there is some several several error blocks about this so just remember to put this macro okay why is that that 
the inference kernel is derived by the Q object. The Q object is the base class of inference kernel. Okay, this is because inference kernel is the only path or the only interface between the prod compiler and the and everything that it regarding about the inferencing with the Qt UI. So there is something called signals, there is something that we need to use slots, that it's a concept of Qt and we need to do it inside of this inference kernel. So and thereby we need to convert our inference kernel to be a Q object. It's not such a big deal. Is there is not a second in second um, problem, um, so don't worry about it. There is no second impl Im implications. So, okay. Mm, the next step. Let me see. Is to put the member access keywords this is from Qt signals and private of the C++ and we also need to declare a forward declaration of a class of the Qt UI that it's called question dialog why are we using the forward definition? This is because, mm, well, the principal reason of the C++ that use a uh, forward declaration is to avoid or to have a release of about uh, two bidirectional dependencies. So, for example, you have class A and B being uh, depend each other. You will need uh, the class B to compile the class A, but because the class A needs the class B to be compiled, then we are having the infinite loop or depend dependency. So the forward declaration is to avoid that but in this case this is to avoid the syntax errors of the compiler saying that there is no question dialog uh, declared and that's the only thing about that okay let's start with the private members and they are going to be to let me see. Actually, there are three. So the first one is a cons pointer to a prop tree builder. Prop tree. I have put the. I need to put the header of the workspace. Workspace already have to include the prop tree builder, so I need. And not need to worry about that. Cons prop tree builder. So it's a cons pointer to a cons um, prop tree builder. PTB. We also will need a workspace pointer to a cons, well, a point, a cons, <laughs> a cons workspace. Pointer. I think that I'm confusing myself, but the point is that the workspace must be the pointer must be um, cons, but we're actually going to write to the workspace pointer, so we need just to put it in that way. Uh, we also need to cons cons cons. Oops. And this 
this also comes okay bool m b continue inference process this boolean is um, in addition to the dialog that we're going to prompt to the user saying that if you want to infer something else so this is the internal boolean to handle that so okay mm, as explained I'm not saying that the object is cons because we're going to write in then So let's do the constructor. But before doing that, we need to do some changes to the workspace. So as I said, the workspace uh, has a strong dependency with the inference kernel, and the the inference kernel is the only one who can even know about the the existence of the workspace. So to do so, we're going to create and say that friend class inference kernel and subsequently we're going to say that the constructor is private. And um, I think that that's it. So we need to put the inference kernel as a friend at the workspace. And we're also are going to create um, access access function from the inference kernel to change some containers of the workspace. Uh, in the Qt UI, we will we will change that, and I think that that's it. So let's start with the constructor. So the constructor prop tree builder tb on oh, the light. I need it. Okay. Control E two, Control two. Here we go. For this kernel, let me just compile. There's gonna be some problems. Yeah, I know it. Um. Okay. Prop tree builder. You might wonder why we are not using cons in in the parameter. This is because there is an implicit conversion between uh, from not cons to cons, but not in the other way. You cannot change implicit change implicitly the a cons object to a not cons object. You might need the the cons cast. So. This way, we're going to use our initialized list. Just let me see. Mm. Okay. MPTB. TB. Um, MPWOS. A new workspace. Um, and BTB. Uh, sorry. M B. I want to say to true. What's the need for uh, Spanish stuff? Inference kernel. Um. No. Inference kernel. Kernel. Let's see if it's compiling. 
great. That's cool. Okay. You may remember that this is a dynamic memory issue. If you create a object with the new operator, you must delete it. Okay. The next step is to do a public function called um, do no, x x for value with a parameter or integer parameter oh, come on, integer called entry and is returning a boolean. Uh, there is a very important issue here because we are, I'm using the boolean to return if the function was successful or there were failures. Uh, I really recommend to instead of using int or rather to use sorry rather to use bool, you may use int, but to do so you need to implement it something called events. You must say that, for example, if the the returning value is zero, then it means that the event is I don't know a success of is minus one. Maybe it could be a, a specific failure. For example, that there is a mm, I don't know maybe that there is a comparison error. Maybe just just throw in errors uh, randomly but I would like to use the boolean just to make it simple and don't wait too much time about this handling of the event so inference x for value and then what it's going to do this function well, this is the internal function to ask the user how to of the environment uh, any component of hardware that can han can be handled uh, in this way to give us the the value of uh, a certain atom. So, for instance, maybe the knowledge base. Uh, is composed by 90 atoms. Uh, I don't know, uh, 20 rules, may, uh, just for instance. And this, the application will ask the value uh, periodically the the value of the atoms using this function. And uh, it's going to be um, a few times, so the knowledge base will be iterated uh, several times. So whatever. Okay, we will need the Q text stream std out. Of course, we need to include the Q text stream header. Uh, we also will need the Q text stream int called int std int. And Q string uh, called symbol, and we're going to have a problem here because we need a function to get the symbols of the tree builder. So let's go to load project Q17, and the one that I'm using is prop compiler v2. Go to this header. Property Builder and change this to be a Q vector. Go underneath and create a new function Q vector Q string get symbols. I think there is symbols. And I think base cons, of course, return M uh, 
think that's called this. We need to change that. You might change that if you want it. Well, for the moment, I won't. Mm. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. So doing so, compile please, and go to inference kernel here. And it's going to throw an error. Oh wow, no error at all. <laughs> Send bolts at mptb get three at entry. I want to have the first. So what are we doing here? Imagine the get symbol is getting a temporal. Temporal. Let me just look at it uh, here. A temporal Q vector Q string that contains the uh, the symbols of the. Oh God, what's happening here? A string. And the compiler is not getting the errors. There is. This could be a problem on that. Um, Okay, no yours, this word. Ah, okay, so let's see what's doing the symbols in the financial CS. Go to the dot CTT, clear. And if I remember, mm, if I remember well, is that the symbols is containing um lyri lyrical expression of the entries of the tree so i think that for example if the entry is operator we will say uh, ah i i understand now for example you have a and b the tree of course uh, is represented by the A, the node A is represented by an uh, integer, for example, called B24. But with get symbol, we can get the A lyrical variable. So um, this this get symbols we're going to use it to to represent to the user the the nodes that are being iterated. So the next step is to determine if the what PWS be um, asked atoms. Those are private um, because the inference kernel is a um, it's um it's a friend of the workspace it, it can access to all the the private members of the workspace so um, contains the entry pretty straightforward let's say if we had asked for this entry that we are going to periodically or a few times a lot of times call this ask for value maybe in the first time we set a value to the entry and you might remember the definition of a node or any rule any rule mm, atom is that if if it gets a, a, if it gets already a value it shouldn't change um, second time or lately so we need to define first that if is in the ask atoms doesn't mean that it has uh, oh sorry I remember now um, yeah it's that concept we're going to use the book and this Atom is as already online. Think that just in case we're going to include the Q debug header 
and go again to the place we were we also need to return false saying that there was a um, problem and continue to go forward okay next step is to and uh, one of the reasons that we need to do all this stuff with the friend the inference kernel being the friend of the workspace is because we need to write in the workspace so if it's not in the ads atoms well we need to append it and after appended we need to ask the user to keep the value of this entry of this atom so let's go and prompt in the console asking for the value of two points symbol and line blah. again do you know the value and we're going to put the loops what I'm going to put uh yes T to no I'm lying. so before asking for the value of the of the atom we need to ask if we, the environment of the client has any knowledge of the value of this atom because it's possible actually it's possible that uh, we are asking for a uh, atom that the environment do, uh, doesn't have any idea about uh, its value so we need to first ask if if know it so we need to save this to uh, variable select no selection selection wait q string selection uh equal q string an empty string and also need to say well if selection to int it's equal to want or selection mm, equal yes if the user of the environment knows well the hardware also can be a module knows about the value then we can ask if and um, what's the actually what's the value so when this create a knowledge queue string value or selection just to not merge the concepts we can do it because uh, selection is not going to be used anymore so out which is the value uh, which is its value uh jump of the line one over zero there is just two values in the propositional mm, word that it's zero or one and blind mm, if while selection dot to end um one commanded mm, value selection mm, to int equals zero mm, then we wanted to set the value to item we need to the entry of the tree and um, value selection ensure that it's in integer we haven't implemented this function we're going to implement it after this so 
We pension. Oops. If and if if and To not be confused. If the user doesn't have any idea about the value of the atom, then we need to display mm, okay. No, it's not here. It's here. We need to handle the error if the user prompt any value that is different to one of zero. So we might say that Q the book uh, invalid value for atom symbol and line and return false. Okay, and now to finish. We're going to say if we did it. Mm, I think that there is a problem here. No, it's not any problem. Because we can append it, but if the user said that of the environment of any hardware or module uh, said that it's not knowing the 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 existence of the or the value of the of that and then we just need just to return false okay okay let's implement mm, compile in the wall oh an arrow uh, what is saying passing cons as this mm. I think that when it say that it's not cons mm. okay dude what's going on here I think there is something regarding the uh, defense kernel. I don't even know the meaning of qualifiers. Cons. Keep string. Word. Mm -hmm. Copy again. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that this need to be count. Okay, in this. Okay, we already know that when you are using the entries uh, integer, mm, when you are uh, implementing or calling a function, you also implicitly uh, calling as an argument the the this 
object that means the we're asking the a uh, temporary object of the object that we are calling in this way I think that the problem is that ax at atoms has problem so let's go to the workspace private let's go atoms cube vector WS MB X atoms dot append entry entry. It's not going to work. I knew it. I knew it. Mm. Uh, let me finish. If I'm now reaching the solution, I'm going to put it in the end of the video. But let's implement it. the set value to atoms. Uh, uh, um, now. It's taking longer than I was expecting. So boom, set value to atom. Mm, int entry dot bool value. Okay, so bool inference kernel set value to atoms things that's the reason that I really like Qt creator uh, I think the visual still also do that also does that mm. well, well. so what this function does is that's going to actually it's going to put the value to um, to some containers of workspace just that but it has some complexity so if the entry is not adequate I'm going to the book log uh, the issue and say that the atom does does not exist in the tree and line and return false. Okay, next step is queue string log atom. We're going to create a temporal variable. Well, a local variable to hold the symbol of the entry get symbols dot add and ptp get three add entry dot first Boop. entry dot first uh, that's it so next step is to define if we have the this atom it has already a um, value. I think that this is to avoid ask the same atom in during a section. So for example, we, we might have that the uh, um, let me put it in a sample really really fast. Uh, a implies B, B implies C, and say that A and B implies T. So what this if does is to avoid uh, ask again the value of A. This is for optimization because it might be very simple in this way but maybe there is going to be a lot of A's in our knowledge base 
uh, we don't want to waste time asking again for the value of a when we already know that there is no value and if you go uh, backwards to the videos you're going to see that imagine that this is the knowledge base um, we actually we are iterating the knowledge base several times so for example let's say the C contains the value of A so we might say okay I don't have the value of A but to infer B but in the next rule C uh, that it's a value that actually I know maybe C can be 1 so if, if C is 1 then A is 1 so the problem here is that we hadn't um, inferred the value of p so we can actually do is to again go to the first rule of the knowledge base and as we already know the value of a we can then infer the value of p and okay there was just a review but the point is to ask value is optimization to not uh, repeat asking uh, the value of uh, f of the atom that we already know that it's not having a value of if that atom has a value okay so um, if npws uh, uh relevant atoms so this is the difference with the contains entry with the as atoms container is that acceptance of is optimization and relevant atoms is saying that we cannot change the value of the atom if the atom has a value already that it means that it's in the container uh, relevant atoms and uh, then we we want as uh, change the value of that atom in this case we are going to insert it because it's not there mm, and relevant atom dot insert entry dot value the book relevant atom added. I think that we are doing a lot of logs because uh, we're going to uh, well it's going to be uh, quite difficult but we're going to debug our implementation mm, so that's the reason that we're seeing a lot of logs it's a difference with the proc compiler but that we didn't have to put a lot of logs because it wasn't that difficult so uh, m.pws and m relevant atoms value entry oh god entry it's different the value think that this is uh, the mean of being uh, consistent with the value we our s persistence shouldn't uh, must not change the value of, of something of a symptom it's not saying the real thing is lying because if we say well uh, I think that I had a uh, smoke, uh, black smoke, we can, we can say as a symptom. But then later you say, oh, no, no, it's, uh, it's yellow, <laughs> maybe. Uh, that's not consistency. Uh, you need to say and be sure that the smoke is black or some uh, a symptom is black because it's going to change all the assumptions and all the information of this expert system. Cue the book. Mm, mm, invalid attempt 
to set different value to atom. Um, fuck off, low atom. And then we. forget this um, then return forwards we need to be consistent so if atom is in the container already we're going to ignore it ignore Ignore it. It low atom and blind and return false. So that's it. Let me. I'm going to pause the video and reboot it. Now I'm resuming it to see what's going on here. To be honest, uh, I I have see that error, but I don't remember how to solve it. Uh, let me compile it. There are two errors. Ooh. It's above the worst phase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let me see something that is private fuck off mm, I can kernel well I discovered sorry I was confusing the concept of that's the reason in the video I was saying stupid things the point is that you need to read when you're using the cons to the pointers and uh, cons in the pointers is to read from the right to the left and saying well I have a cons, cons pointer to a cons prop tree builder and the something something that I did is put the cons in this part saying that the workspace was cons so when I tried to uh, that was really easy <laughs> it's correct I realized it uh, briefly and let me compile it so I changed the cons from stay here to be here and it's completely already and the problem was that in the inference kernel um, I was writing in this part in the third and above I also was writing here in a pen so I put the the object to be console it was you could you can do that you can write in the cons object so that's it guys ah uh, uh, it's, it's kind of difficult this well we are just starting later and I already said that I'm, I'm not going to implement the forward chain and the backward chain just to make you try it mm. In the next video we are going to continue with the functions of the inference kernel. I think that is going to last, I think, it's going to last um, kind of six or seven more uh, videos. But they are amazing, I think. If you really like this, you're going to discover that it's amazing, this implementation. And at the end we're going to have a workable uh, working as persistent if you do your forward chaining and your backward chaining implementation if you have worries in the along the way if you have worries of how to implement it you can ask in the comment section of youtube of the blog um, I think that I always say in the comment leave a uh, comment if you have any doubt or any question uh, please visit our social media 
I think the or block is geartech.com.mx. Uh, we also have page in Facebook, Twitter. You can also follow my personal social media, Carlos HDC, and principally um, both in the YouTube channel. Um, that's it. So see you. Thanks. Bye. Finish.